My next guest is a board-certified nutritionist, anti-aging expert, and best-selling author of Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet. Dr. Kellyanne, thanks for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy to be here. I love you folks. <laughs> so I, uh, rumor has it we're sitting on a liquid gold mine. I don't know if you heard about it. Oh, we are sitting on a liquid gold mine. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that what we're talking about today, the untapped gold mine we have? We are, because we're so lucky we have it. And, yeah. you know, so, ma- so many times it's the simplest things that are the most powerful and we overlook them. And so that's kind of my job to, you know, I didn't invent anything. All I'm doing is reintroducing concepts that really work. I've been in practice for over 24 years and I am actually just speaking what I've seen that has worked across the board, typical results that I've seen in practice. How did you get to becoming the bone broth lady? You know, yeah, it's, it's a, crazy, right? Like, yeah. like who picks that? You right. know, it, it, it kind of picked me in a way. And, and I'll tell you, I was a bodybuilder in college really into fitness, really into bodybuilding. And from that point on, I really got into nutrition. And so I've always been into nutrition, became a board certified naturopathic doctor, studied a lot in Europe. So I'm one of the few doctors in the country that's actually certified in biological medicine through the Paracelsus Clinic in Switzerland. Had very high level training, been in practice a long time. And here I was on the clinic floor, high volume practice, always had done very well in practice, And I got into my 40s, and I can't even tell you what happened. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I didn't get the results that I used to get. So my skin didn't look as good. My hair, skin, nails, all of it started going crazy. I started getting thicker in the waist. And I thought, God, I use all these practices and principles. I've used them on myself. I've used them in practice. What is happening with me? And so then you have to ask yourself the question. If we're supposed to fall apart after 40, that means everybody has to. It means there's a genetic component to it. We know a lot about epigenetics. We know there's got to be a genetic component. So everybody has to fall apart and they don't. So I knew that there was a lot of things that were probably missing. Long story short, I started implementing more of these, what I call these fat burning, powerful foods in my diet. I started using bone broth and I could not believe the results. Couldn't believe it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start trying this on patients and see what happens. And some of the videos that I have and some of the video testimonials would just, you wouldn't believe it. A woman told me, you know what, Dr. Kellyanne, I feel like I'm trapped in my home. I have such bad colitis. I can't even leave. And all of these things, these digestive problems, all of these skin problems, all of these autoimmune problems, things like thyroid problems, even things like diabetes, obesity, all of these have a common underpinning. And what I discovered about bone broth is what bone broth does so incredibly, like the overhanging fruit in all of this is its ability to really reduce inflammation because that's so much of the common underpinning of all these modern day diseases that we have. So I started using it in clinic and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe these numbers, the empirical data on these people, the data is just changing. Then I thought, you know what? What if we use this in a system to help people get slimmer and younger? What if, what if I used it for that. I started using it in clinic to help people slim. I used it for people to get stronger. I used it for people to get better skin tone. It was incredible. I thought, God, it's it's typical. The results are typical. Then I started examining what exactly is in it. I dialed it down to a very small particle. Like what exactly is in this that's making this happen? And I thought, God, this is like so much nutrition in a mug. And that's when I said, this is liquid gold. This, I've seen everything come across my desk, everything from spray vitamins to every magical elixir that you could possibly imagine. Everything was going to be it. Everything was going to work. And I knew this was really it because this is real. Hmm. This is real. It's powerful. It all it is is real food. It can be very ex- inexpensive to make. It's easy to make. It's got every component that makes it easy, even for a working mother, even for people with high power careers, careers people who travel. You can do this. And the results are so stunning that it really ignited me to start a whole brand. I mean, my whole brand is based on just this cup of liquid gold because liquid gold, I believe in it that much. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy thing to go after to brand yourself as. You really have crazy. to have the belief. And, uh, well, let me tell you what everyone said. That is not sexy. That is never going to sell. You can't call a book the bone broth diet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, ew, yuck. I've heard it all. <laughs> really? 
you know, who, who would ever guess that, you know, I went on to have a New York Times bestselling book, a very successful television show, my public tel- television show, 21 Days to a Slimmer and Younger You, a PBS special, one of the most successful. And I have built an entire brand online through drkellyann.com, all based on simply the results this gets. Yeah. People, people have fallen in love. I mean, there really is undoubtedly there is a bone broth revolution. There truly is. So what about, you mentioned testimonials, either yourself or the people you've been working with. What were some of the people you saw coming in, like the conditions you were seeing, and then you get them on the liquid gold and what happened? So we have about 1,200 emails that we get a week. And these are, you know, in addition to questions that we get, these are pure testimonials. And if you ever go to my Amazon page and you read what people are saying, they're sending pictures in, they're, they're saying, oh my gosh, I had a woman who had cancer who said, oh my gosh, you would not believe the difference in my results. I mean, this is something extreme. She's, my oncologist gives bone broth to everyone. This is a traditional doctor. This is not a holistic doctor, a traditional doctor who's giving this to patients because he sees the benefits and all of this. So one of the leading doctors uh, right outside of New York is now a gastroenterologist, gives bone broth to his patients because of its incredible gut healing results. I've had women say, you know, my joints are so achy. I don't know what to do. I have such achy joints, which is, by the way, one of the most common things that we see in practice. We see people coming in with achy joints. Achy joints is something that bone broth really handles beautifully. I've had women come in and say, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm aging so quickly. What's going on here? because of the anti-inflammatory properties, because of the ability to build collagen and, and all of these amazing gelatin properties. So really what it comes down to, again, is putting that forest fire out. So many of the things that I see are resultant from this forest fire, from this crazy inflammation that's gotten out of control. And we know now, we know from so many of the doctors that have come out and said this now, so much of this starts in the gut, right? We know about the microbiome. We know about gut health. Well, I have to tell you, after being in practice and seeing so many different things on the market for gut health, I, don't, I have not seen anything work better than bone broth, bar none. Wow. I have not seen anything work faster and anything work deeper than bone broth to heal the gut. What about like fermented foods? I love fermented foods. So you'll read a lot about that in my book. And I'm a huge fan. But I have to tell you... <laughs> Bone broth, so I always say my one-two punch, I love bone broth, healthy fats, getting those healthy fats in your diet, getting the the crappy fat out off your shelves, putting in the good fats, you know, putting the bone broth in there really is such a, if people only did that, they did that alone, they would see such a a big change. And then, of course, going from there, there are tentacles, like I love fermented foods, as you said, fermented foods is, is amazing, understanding how to build a plate, understanding the macros. You know, all these little things, they all kind of lead you know, up to one big picture, which is leading an anti-inflammatory life as opposed to a pro-inflammatory life. And the reason why so many of us are in trouble is because it really is a lifestyle picture. It's a picture of a lifestyle. Yeah. And unless we can understand that and, and, and really understand that it's about this pro versus anti-inflammatory lifestyle. And when you understand this and, and you dive into it, it it's easy. You said like 20 things I want to jump into. Um, Yes. And I love your energy, by the way. This is already a great show. I have high energy. Oh, nobody told you that? You weren't warned? (laughs) I was not. (laughs) Normally people are warned about me. (laughs) It's great. I love it. Let's (laughs) keep the party going. Mm -hmm. Um, So before we start diving into, you know, inflammation, uh, all the other good stuff, uh, can we just set up what bone broth is for the person who's not familiar with it? So bone broth is like soup on steroids. And let me explain. If you go to the grocery store and you throw a can of soup into the cart, it will be something that's flash cooked. It'll be something that's cooked very fast at a very high temperature and you won't have all parts of the bone in there. So what that means is you have very diminished healing. Actually none because what normally happens, say in a can of Progresso, for example, there's a lot of additives. There's a lot of preservatives and there is more salt than I would ever recommend anyone ever having in a meal. And it's not the kind of salt we want because we know that salt can either kill you or make you well. So it's the bad kind of salt, additives, preservatives, all of that. Now that versus taking some bones, simple as this, 
you can actually take a chicken carcass if you want what I call the I'm a mom at home with four kids and I'm trying to balance everything. You could actually take a chicken carcass, take the meat off, put it in a slow cooker, put some water over about one inch over that carcass and put whatever you like in there, celery, carrots, onions. And it's so simple because you're going to take all of this out. You can just break the celery, throw it in there. All you do is cut the onion in four, four, just two, bam, bam, done. Carrots, break them, throw them in there. And then what I say is anything that is your, whatever your jam is. For me, I love lemongrass. So I throw lemongrass in there because it has such a beautiful aroma, beautiful flavor. It's inexpensive. It's great to add to the soup. All you do is do that. So you've got about one inch over all of this. So you're going to make chicken broth. And I recommend starting with chicken because it's a little milder in taste and a little milder in, fl- in, in the scent of it. So it's a good way to get started. Then you can either add a little bit of lemon juice or nothing at all. Uh, so a lot of people feel like you have to add some apple, apple cider vinegar or things to pull the nutrients out of the bone. You actually don't have to do that because I've tested it out. It's not necessary. I've talked to a lot of the chefs, a lot of the paleo chefs at Paleo FX. They agree with me. It's really, we're finding that it's not necessary. Then you just put the lid, turn on the slow cooker, and go about your day. Do whatever you'd like to do. And you have this beautiful, and the key word here, the key word, beautiful gelatinous broth. And it's in that gelatin, in that broth, that there's so much healing potential. So you can either make it with chicken, beef, turkey, fish, whatever it is you'd like. They're all healthy. So chicken, beef, turkey, fish, and you have your choice in how you cook it. My favorite, which is why I was telling you about the slow cooker, it's either a slow cooker, you can use a stock pot, you can even use a pressure cooker. And I, at first, I was really a little bit uncertain about recommending the pressure cooker, but I've since done it enough with a pressure cooker and had enough uh, enough chefs tell me that they are getting very gelatinous broths with the pressure cooker. So even though you're cooking it for two hours, it's working. So if you need a speed dial, the pressure cooker is the way to go. If you want to just walk away from it while it cooks, the slow cooker is the way to go. If you like things done the hearty kind of old fashioned way, with a stock pot, that works as well. And so do you, the gelatin is what you look for on, on top. That's kind of determines the, the quality of it or? Yeah. So the, that's where so many of the gut healing power comes from. And you may not see it as you're cooking it or when it's done, but you can always tell if you put it in the refrigerator and you see that coagulation at the yes. top, that thick core, that's how you know that you've captured it. That's how you know that you, you've got it. But if you slow cook it, and you follow the it's simple directions. I mean, honestly, there's so many bone broth recipes. Now they're all over the place. Right. It's, it's very simple directions. When I tell people, please don't get into your head about this. Throw some bones in a pot and let it go. All you need is bones that have cartilage in them. And if I'm making a, a beef broth, I want to add things like shank. I want to add things like oxtail. I want to add things like short rib in there because I give it a really beautiful, meaty flavor. But just look for bones that have that cartilage in there. You can buy, buy these bones online very easily now. You can buy, get them from a butcher. And I always recommend start a relationship with a butcher. You will love it. Really super easy. You can buy it at farmer, farmer's markets, farms, all kinds of places to get these bones. But the speed dial for that just buy them online. U.S. Mm. Wellness Meats I love. I mean, there's, there's places that have them. Okay. And um, so you mentioned taking the meat off if you're doing a chicken. This yeah. might be a little too technical, but mm-hmm. does it matter if the meat's on and you brew it with no, the chicken? No, you absolutely can. Okay. You absolutely can. It's all personal preference. Some people just like to use the bones. I oftentimes just throw the whole thing in there. Yeah. You really, as you start getting into the groove of this, you find easier and easier shortcuts and better ways of doing this. And it's so non-meticulous. It's not like a lot of cooking that you find that, you know, you have to follow. I mean, this is so like brain dead work. Anyone, I guarantee you, your eight-year-old can make bone broth. I promise you. Right. If you have an eight-year-old at home, they can do it. Okay. <laughs> so it's super simple. It's super easy. About $4 a pound is what you're going to expect to pay. It's, it's inexpensive. And now... 
there are options to buy online. A year ago, I would never have recommended that you peruse online and look for bone broth because there wasn't enough good quality. And I just, now there's a lot of good quality bone broth. You're going to pay more because of course you're paying for someone's time. That's what happens when you decide that you don't want to put the time in and and you pay someone else for their time. It just costs more. So just know that you're going to pay more. But there's a lot of delicious options online where you can buy bone broth. And it's super easy. You rip the packet open and you're, you're good to go. Okay. And um, so before we start getting into the inflammation stuff, so someone who's ready to tap into the liquid gold, uh, yes. they get their bones, they put them in a pot, and then they're – how often do they do this? Do they drink it every day? Or I, I would prescribe – now, so this has not been tested out clinically yet. But from what I can see from using this for a long time, about two cups a day – are good for a healing regimen. About two cups a day, two mugs a day. And like sixteen the, ounces? About yeah, about sixteen ounces is great. Okay. So so uh, that that's enough to get in there and heal the gut. And then I've gotten questions like, should it be the first thing I drink in the morning? Is that best for healing my gut? I can't honestly answer that. I have not tested that out yet. All I can tell you is that we have our patients just drink two cups a day and they all do well whether they use it as a snack whether they use it with a meal, they're, they're getting results. So I just think it's a matter of just getting those nutrients in your body and it making a difference. And have you seen a difference between which bones are most beneficial? Like, Well, gold? I can tell, yeah, I can tell you that. Uh, so th- now this is, I, again, I always have to say this, this is just what I've read and what some other doctors have told me that they're finding that the beef broth is actually better for hair, skin, nails, and the chicken broth is actually the best one for gut healing. And the fish broth is the best for overall healing, like if you're, in a, if you're in a health crisis. Now, I know that they use fish broth a lot in many, many different cultures after having a baby. So that was one of the first places that I was introduced to broths, these really healthy broths, was after I had my children. Uh, my, my sister-in-law is Asian, and she would bring over these, these beautiful broths made from fish. Hmm. So that's what – So, and, and in terms of getting the actual bone that's the best for that, that soup that you're making, just make sure it has a lot of cartilage. That's all you have to make sure of. And that's where you strike a relationship with a butcher. All you do is go through it with the butcher once or twice. And by the way, they love this. They love this. They love going through this with people. And then you just say, look, I'm making bone broth. Have you heard of it? I want to make really good bone and rich soup. And you're going to laugh, but the reason why – so many grocery stores, no matter the quality of the grocery store, the reason why they have bones is they actually save them for dogs because there's a lot of people who come in and they want bones for their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the dogs yeah. are on something. Yeah. yeah, right. They're smarter than we are. <laughs> yeah. And so, okay, someone's making their bone broth. They're sold yes. on this. They're getting ready to get started. Um, let's go back into the benefits of, of why yeah. people should be doing this. You mentioned gut inflammation. Take it away. Yeah, so I love this part of it because there's so much there. So if someone has a problem sleeping, one of the first things that I do is put them on bone broth because I know the glycine in there, the amino acids in there, the amino acid compounds in there really are so helpful. Because you see, here's the thing. Even though we're an obese society, we're actually very deficient, That's where we are. So what I see in practice all the time is people coming to me overweight but yet malnourished. So we know this is going on. So when you give your body that something so powerful like bone broth, bam, it wakes it up right away. So these amino acid compounds are really good. So so, say someone says, you know, I'm really having a problem sleeping. Bam, bone broth. Say someone comes in and they are a woman and they are 38 years old and their hormones are starting to go crazy and they're not starting to not feel like themselves anymore. Bam, I say bone broth. Why? Because bone broth is one of the best things that you can do for your adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are like the size of a walnut. They're on top of your kidneys. And so many hormones come out of this. So most people think it's just cortisol, epinephrine, the catecholamines. It's not. You have so many hormones that are commanded by these adrenal glands. And guess what? Bone broth is liquid gold for your adrenals. So if someone comes in and they say, you know what, I have achy joints, I have diabetes, I have Crohn's, I have colitis, 
I have psoriasis, I have rosacea, and the list goes on and on and on, then I say, bam, bone broth, because we know the gelatin, which is cooked collagen. So I tell you to get bones with cartilage. Why? Because the cartilage is going to turn to collagen. And the collagen is then going to turn to this beautiful gelatin, which is going to heal your gut. And then if someone comes to me and they say, you know what? How does your skin look so good? And I can tell you that I'm at a, of a mature age <laughs> and I have never used any fillers or Botox, anything like that. And that's a personal choice and that's cool, whatever. I'm choosing not to because I don't have to. And the reason why I don't have to is because I know what healthy fats can do and I know what bone broth can do. And so if you picture your skin cells like they're inflated balls, okay? That's what you picture your skin cells to look like. And over time, these balls start to deflate. They start to deflate. And the more diets that we go on, the more they deflate because they take nutrients and they take all the healthy stuff that we need for our cells to bounce and repel, takes it out of the cell. So they deflate, they deflate. When you start drinking bone broth, oh my gosh, that your cells become very full and bouncy. So not only are your cells healthier and they're bound, they need to be like this, okay, instead of clumped like this. So I say you want your cells to flow like a river and not be stuck like a swamp. It's really critically important. But also these skin cells, they start to bounce again. So what does that mean for you? It means that you are going to have that skin that's bouncy and beautiful and it's not everything that we don't want in our skin is that real that dry kind of look. Your skin becomes very beautiful and bouncy and, and you're going to be shocked. Yeah. Uh, so someone hearing that, they're like, well, Dr. Killian, can I just shortcut it and skip the bones and take a collagen supplement? Is that going to be the same effect? So I love collagen supplements, actually. And I love coll what collagen can do. It's not the same as bone broth because in bone broth, you're getting the protein. You're getting more of the amino acids you're getting a different fat component. But if you say, I need to, I, I always call it the booster. I always call it, so I always say, I love to put it in my bone broth already, or I love to have it in addition to. So I love, love, love those products. I do. There's a lot of really good collagen products out there. But bone broth is bone broth and collagen is collagen. And, you know, let's keep them different because they really are. You know, yeah. so um, two cups of bone broth a day, then everything on top of that is just an enhancement. So I like, I'm very, I'm the type of practitioner that is not huge on a ton of supplements. I like to get it done. I like to get it done, understand your macros, understand how to build a plate, get those healthy fats in your diet because everything rises and falls on your healthy fats and then take it from there with supplementation. But I consider bone broth to be part of actually that macro building plate. It's part of all of that. So anything you take on top of that is, a, is outside that realm. So I would consider the gelatin to be like a booster. And it's a beautiful booster. And I'll tell you, I was talking to Diane Sanfilippo about this. I mean, the, the differences in hair, skin, and nails when you start supplementing with it, it it's amazing. Hmm. It really is. Hmm. Okay. And, and uh, people listening right now, we get a lot of uh, female listeners who are having either female hormone issues uh, in their you know, mid-40s, late-40s. It makes 40s. you crazy. It makes you crazy. That yeah. is like a hamster wheel of hell. <laughs> Guys, I know. This is something I can speak to so well. And I told you that when I was in my 40s and I crashed and all of that and I had to find better ways. I am not on any kind of bioidentical hormones. I, I think that it could be that can be a great solution. I'm just telling you, for me personally, I haven't had to do any of that. And I truly believe that because of the last 12 years I've been doing bone broth. I really believe I think I've hedged myself from a lot of the common errors that women have to go through, then I'm finding, oh my gosh, you really don't. You mm. really don't. You don't have to have a skin, your skin that starts going you know, terrible and hair that starts thinning out and the mood, oh my gosh, the mood and the sleep. So one of the things that women that you just described want to hear more than anything is they want to hear that they can have a good night's sleep again. They want to feel that. So the glycine and some of the other amino acids and, and everything in the broth, it really does help you sleep. And one of the things that we're not talking about 
is not only can this two cup a day prescription be so monumental for you, your health and the way you look and erasing, you know, the wrinkles, all of that. But you can also use this broth, if I can get into this a little bit, you can also use it in what I call mini fasting, mini fasting, which is why the book took off so well because people really like the mini fasting component. So that's something that was new and revolutionary that I developed was a way to use bone broth in fasting because we know intermittent fasting, we know it works, we know all of the magnificent properties and all of the outcomes from fasting and how positive they are. But guess what? You're talking to somebody who sat across the desk from people for over 20 years hearing everything and guess what? The practical answer to that is not everyone can do it. Not everyone can do fasting and and not feel terrible. So what a wonderful thing to be able to sip on broth two non-consecutive days a week with one light meal of macros at 7 o'clock if you need it and shed stored body fat. Hello, stored body fat. And if you're out there listening and you don't know what I mean, I'm talking about the stuff under your chin, on your arms, your belly, your butt, your thighs, all that stuff that we say, oh, really? Is this what I have to deal with now? Is is this where I am? That's about burning stored body fat. So in addition to all the movement and everything that we learn about, in addition to all of that, putting this Cycling in some fasting days, many fasting days with bone broth has been a godsend for so many people that have come across and the letters that we have coming in telling us how it worked for them. And that's the only thing. And because what happens is as you progress in age, two things happen. Okay. You get what we call resistant fat, resistant very difficult to lose. And that's where the hamster wheel of craziness comes in. You feel like you're going crazy. And the other thing that happens is that you get belly fat. And belly fat is dangerous fat. This is the fat we don't want. This is the fat with estrogens. This is the fat where your heart pulls from these fats, where we have cardiac disease, all of these things. We don't want fat around our abdomen. We don't. It's too dangerous. So using the bone broth as a way for slimming in two ways. Number one, the mini fasting that we were just speaking of, and two, to use fasting before meals so you don't eat as much because Penn State did a study that shows that when we incorporate these broths into our diet, we end up weighing anywhere from 7 to 10 pounds less a year just from adding broths. Wow, that's phenomenal. Uh, Yeah. So with the mini fast, the bone broth, these are all things people can do to kind of – either prevent some of those issues we were talking about, but also go back through and do some healing, which in turn would make them lose weight once they're healed. Oh, yes. So when we know that when our our cells are super healthy and they're doing what they're supposed to do, you burn, you burn more, you burn more. So what I always say is, you know, your goal should be to be a natural fat burner. So I'm sitting here right now talking with you and I know that I'm burning fat. I know that I'm not storing. I know that I'm burning. My body's always in a state of burning and burning and burning. It's because I have these fat burning foods. I have this bone broth. It doesn't have to be that hard. And most importantly, as you get older, it doesn't have to go bad. It doesn't have to go bad. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to look bad. And I can tell you that if I didn't find these concepts that are in the bone broth diet, if I didn't find them, if I didn't learn them, if I didn't implement them, it may have gone bad for me. And this is somebody who's been in practice for years talking about all, all health concepts and, and going over diet and lifestyle with people. And still it wasn't enough because as we get older, again, whether two things that happen, we have weight loss resistance and we get more belly fat. And a lot of that is driven by these hormones. And again, bone broth really does go in, help the adrenals in such a way that your, your hormones stabilize so much. Anything else, uh, uh in addition to bone broth or is bone broth enough to go back in and heal the adrenals? Like what's your total protocol? Is it include or, uh, exclude anything? So I love for, for a program for most people, most people do well on vitamin D, D3. And I talk about that a lot because we actually, I take data on everyone when they come in because I like them to see how they've improved. That's very important for human nature for people to see where they are now and where and how far they've come. So we take data. And one of the things that we know is that people's vitamin D across the board, it's low. We, I don't know that 
you know, I honestly mm-hmm. don't know if we've ever seen a normal. I don't know if we've ever seen a normal. So supplementation with D is really important. And D actually acts like a hormone in your body. It can prevent everything from the common cold to cancer. It's that important. I recommend going to your practitioner, whomever that is, getting a blood draw, seeing where you start, seeing where you start. For vitamin D, it's the only vitamin that I, I say that that's kind of important. Get that starting benchmark. Supplement with vitamin D. And I also think a lot of the oils are good. A lot of the oils, because the omega-3s were so, our ratios are so off between omega-6 and omega-3. They're so off. And even though you have the intelligent listener base that you do, even though we had so many, we have so many years of eating the modern diet that we're still, we're, it's, it's almost like we're playing catch up. So I think a lot of the, the vitamins uh, that, we, that we do, fish oil and things, they can be very advantageous. And also, even though I like, I love actually the bone broth for gut healing, a lot of times I will prescribe some probiotics because they do really speed things up. And some people, well, quite frankly, you can tell a lot by your skin. If you feel your skin and your skin feels super dry and almost ruddy, a ruddy feel, oftentimes that's indicative of your gut. And you can start to see this on patients. And so the probiotics, oftentimes they'll, they'll help. But I don't do a whole lot beyond that. I mean, we do some, not a whole lot beyond that. I just say that if you're going to use Protein powders, I'm a fan of the collagen powders. I love that type of protein. You know, bars and all of that kind of stuff. Just be really mindful of what's in there. Remember, so important to keep your insulin stable. Insulin stabilization is so, so important. It's so critical to so many things. So these are just kind of the tips that I give people just to be watchful of, just so they stay in the zone during the day. They think better, act better, have better relationships, a better life. All of these little things they matter so big, so big. Yeah. So these aren't, these aren't just little conversations. They're actually really big ones because they have a huge impact on your life. So going back to the D3 and fish oil, um, <laughs> you said test, definitely don't guess, but it, is there not like... Not the fish oil. Not, the fish oil is okay. I'm okay with just taking that a priori. I'm fine with that. Uh-huh. I just think for the vitamin D, because it does act like a hormone in your body, it's always good to get a benchmark. Like if, I, if I'm testing somebody's hormones, I don't just guess. I get, you know, I get, I get the data and I say, okay, this is where the, the progesterone, your estrogen, this is where all this is. It's the same thing with vitamin D. I like before I start supplementation, I like to have some kind of benchmark of where they are. Okay. So someone can go into their uh, doctor Anywhere. or practitioner. It's- you can even get you can even Google it online and they'll send you a packet and you can do it, you know, get it done locally. I mean it's so simple. That's like a simple blood draw. Yeah. It's a simple and expensive blood draw. Okay. Cool. And then someone can start supplementing and that has a big in- yes. impact. Um, yes. that, that has a huge impact. When you are low in vitamin D and most people are, oh my gosh, the symptomology, symptom the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency are so vast and so so powerful. You, that's another thing. As soon as you start supplementing, you, you tend to perk right up. Yeah, I know the IUs are pretty in, like they're in the thousands yeah, for supplements. Yeah, thousands. So some people right. take thousand a day. I mean, some people are critically low. I've seen them as low as six, as eight. I mean, it's yeah. really. I mean, that's crazy. That's almost like you don't have any. You don't have any protection at all. It's right. a very protective element. So that's why it's important to make sure it's where it should be. Okay. And then uh, the fish oil, just so for to put a cap on that for people listening, what's your daily dose recommendation for the average you know, person? It, uh, it really varies. It varies what kind of oil, EDA, EPA, uh, uh, primrose oil. It really just varies. Oftentimes, what they have on the label, they have usually have three capsules, between two and three capsules a day. That's usually dead on. So they're really good. Like Nordic Naturals is a really good brand, for instance. And they really have the dosages nailed down when you buy the product. Okay, cool. Um, Any other anti-inflammatory practices? I mean, I I know diet's a huge one. A lot of inflammation comes from what you're not eating instead of what you're eating. Um, Like what are you? Guess what? This is going to surprise you. So here are some of the things that can create inflammation in your body that you may not even know. And number one is stress. So the difference between two people that come into my practice and those, the one that will be the most successful versus not isn't so much someone who follows everything I say with diet strictly. It is the person who has a stress management system. Because to say to not stress out, I would never say that. That's ridiculous. 
a- everything brings on stress. It's a matter of the six inches between your ears, how you think and how you manage that stress. So would you believe me if I told you how you think is probably more important than anything we could talk about today? How you think. Yeah. It's critically important to stress and you can't take it lightly. It's really important because it's a choice how you think. And so that's the defining factor. And what I see from people who are more successful than not in leading a healthy lifestyle and you know, having all, all those things that we want to be fit, you know, to be fit and to be healthy and strong and lean, all, it all comes, really comes down to, to the power of the mind. So I have in the book some of the things I talk about is simple things like, you know, having an inner doorman. And what do I mean by that? It's really critical to remember like who you let into your life. This may sound crazy, but your inner circle is really important. And guess what? It's a lot harder to get people out of your life than get them in. So what I say is think about who you're allowing in your circles. Think about it. Really be cognizant. Be, Be more deliberate. And another thing, managing your yeses. We can't say yes to everything. You have to really say, oh, you have to ask yourself before you take something on, how can I manage this? How is this going to impact me personally? How is it going to impact my family? All of these things. All of these things have a lot to do with how your body responds to things. So if somebody says to me, you know, Dr. Kellyanne, I have high blood pressure. Always had high blood pressure. It's not genetic. I have high blood pressure. And why, what I say to them is what is the environment that you're putting yourself in and choosing to stay in? Because you see, the interesting thing is our innate system in our body. Our body does exactly what we tell, what we tell it to do. Other than about the 5% of the population that may have some kind of genetic issue or genetic mutation, 95% of us, our bodies do exactly what we tell them to do. It has to do with the environment we put ourselves in and we choose to stay in. And that's really important. And that's where the mind comes in. Yeah. I mean, our body's designed to keep us alive. And so one of the ways yes. it can do that is to look for everything that's dangerous. And so yes. sometimes you might be looking around in your environment and you go into that negative spiral and that's your body trying to keep you alive so you have to find ways to make make sure you're saying no this isn't dangerous this is just someone who cut me off in traffic it's not an actual threat um so learning those management strategies to cope with that that's perfectly said yeah because that's that's what happens and you know those things they pile up during a day yeah and if you're not more deliberate in your thinking then you let your subconscious take over and our subconscious you know so much of 95 percent of what comes out of us or what we think is our subconscious and just remember our subconscious has been built since we were born so there's a lot of neuronal there's a lot of pathways in there that may not serve us the way we think so yeah just being aware yeah, and, and you know, going back to the conversation about health, I mean, talk about something that can stress you out is how you feel. And so, I mean, how you feel, if you don't have any energy whatsoever, it's going to be a lot harder to be nice to the people around you and you're going to think everyone treats you poorly. So taking care so of yourself at the, is at the fundamental level and it goes back to the conversation we were just in about uh, bone broth and healing yourself and healing your gut and everything there. So um, I'm curious now, I know you have a lot of different products on your website. Um, If someone is maybe intimidated by like making bone broth or, uh, you know, they want to do it right or they want the best quality. um, What are some of the products you have on there that we can check out? Yeah. So, so I am a stickler for product only because of the business that I've been in for so many years and I've had so many salesmen. Like, so, so when you do what I do when you're in family practice, just like drug salesmen, just like they go to a basic general doctor, I have all the supplement people <laughs> that have come to me over the years saying, right. look, really, my product is the best. So you get really good at really learning really what is the best and what works on people. And we always clinically test everything. So I have bone broth, liquid broth that I sell on, on my website. It's very, very high level, a uh, high level product. It's organic, pasture raised, or the best quality that I can, that I could possibly make for you. That's available. I have a, a really interesting product. No one has anything like it on the market. It's my premier product, which is a collagen broth that you, it's, it comes in packets. You rip it open and you put it in a mug with hot water and it tastes like bone broth. So it's hmm. like bone broth 
Uh, and it, it's really, it's incredible. It's a great product. Everything uh, that I have, my bone broth protein, which is a really good, really clean protein, because I don't like a lot of these proteins that I see on the market. And I was really passionate about making sure that we have something that's really healthy for people. And the whole thing is about upbuilding, right? Sure. We have to upbuild and not downbuild. And so that's some of the products that I have on, on my website. In addition to the Dr. Kellyanne's bone broth diet, that's really a premier book. It, you know, it's everywhere. It's a great read. It's simple. It's easy. It's very conversational, and people have really loved it. Yeah, and that's on Amazon as well, too, it's right? On Amazon, it is. Yes. Okay. So if people want it in the next, I don't know if they have Prime now, they can get it in a, the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they can get it in a day. <laughs> the drone can bring it to you in about a. That's right. <laughs> a little while. Um, yeah, more to come on that. <laughs> well, Doctor Kellyanne, thank you so much for coming on. Um, be sure to direct people your way to check out your your work and your book. Absolutely. Uh, this was a fascinating conversation about bone broth and health, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Me as well. So I, I, you know, I wish the best, best of health for everyone. That really is my true intention. And the thing is, is that when you get healthy, you get slimmer, you get younger, it all falls into place. So where, no matter where you are now, you can get where you want to be. Awesome. And uh, until next time, thanks again. Yeah, until next time. Thank you. All right, Paleo Hackers, that is it. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Dr. Kelly Ann. Fascinating show. I didn't lie, right? Uh, Really interesting stuff about bone broth and what it can do to your health. Again, her website is drkellyann.com. That's D-R Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, and Ann as in A-N-N, dot com. You can get all her uh, bone broth diet books over there, supplements we talked about, resources, etc., Paleohacks.com is the place to be for our archives, recipes, articles, and more over there at paleohacks.com. You're wondering what's for dinner tonight? Look no further. And then my site is clarkdanger.com. If you want to stay up to date on everything I'm doing, um, I would love to keep in contact with you. Just go over there and sign up for the mailing list. I think you download the uh, ebook, 11 Questions to Change Your Life. I believe we have three more shows left after this one. So I'm really excited about the ones we have coming up. Off the top of my head, we got Daryl Edwards next week um, talking about play. Following week, we got Reed Davis coming on to talk about, um, what is it, metabolic chaos. That's what it is. And the hidden symptoms that could be making you overweight or, you know, carrying around a little extra 10 pounds we'd all like to lose. The following week, we got Dr. Jack Wolfson on here talking about um, cardiology and heart health and what that actually has to do with paleolithic living. Okay, so killer lineup. I'm really excited. I'll see you next week back here on the show.